Hi, as announced in the previous video, here I will focus on two thinkers, Jacques Derrida and Elaine Scarry. Both of them have made efforts to rethink ethics and moral behavior for our present time. Before discussing the work of Scarry, I will first focus on Derrida and make a suggestion as to how his ideas about ethics can be connected to music, because Derrida himself hasn't dealt with music. In On Cosmopolitanism and Forgiveness, Jacques Derrida describes ethics as the act of being hospitable to the other, the stranger, the foreigner. As he says, ethics is hospitality. Ethics is thoroughly coextensive with the experience of hospitality. This ethics, this hospitality, Derrida explains, always oscillates between two poles. On the one hand, hospitality is bound to conditional laws. It needs to become concrete, effective, determined. On the other hand, there is an unconditional hospitality, offered a priori to every other, to all foreigners, whoever they may be. Now, the context within which Derrida made these remarks had to do with a situation we know all too well these days. People dispelled from their houses, their families and their land asked to be accepted to countries without war and with a rather high standard of living. Derrida wrote about refugees, about how the foreigner confronts us with the issue of hospitality. However, could we connect Derrida's ideas of hospitality also to music? In other words, could we regard music as an other, a stranger, to whom we can perhaps offer some kind of hospitality? Let's try to make it very concrete, so listen to this video for a brief moment. Of course, I could have chosen a billion other examples, but I assume for a moment that you are not really familiar with this kind of music. That you perhaps might not call this music at all. That you find it annoying, irritating or boring. However, taking Derrida's ideas about hospitality into account, would it be possible to regard this music as another? Asking for a short while for some attention, some goodwill, some openness. Could we, for a brief moment, practice a kind of ethical listening, with an attitude that endeavors to encounter this music with respect, with responsiveness, even with an unconditional hospitality? And who knows, when music might be able to make us listen unconditionally to unfamiliar, strange, maybe even ugly sounds, we can even learn to listen unconditionally to what other people refugees or foreigners are telling us. As the German philosopher Hans-Georg Gadamer writes, anyone who listens is fundamentally open. Without this kind of openness to one another, there is no genuine human relationship. Let's now move from Derrida's ideas about hospitality and ethics to Elaine Scarry's thoughts on how to reconnect beauty and being just. This is my second example to show how music can contribute in its own specific ways to ethical debates and concrete moral behavior. In her essay on beauty and being just, Scarry states that by encountering and dwelling on objects or events that we consider beautiful, a certain sensibility becomes possible that exceeds mere aesthetical gratification. In her words, 
it seems as if beautiful things have been placed throughout the world to serve as small wake-up calls to perception, to a rigorous standard of perceptual care. Beauty assists us, Scary writes, to address injustice by increasing the possibility that things will be carefully handled and protected. The attentiveness demanded by something that we consider beautiful impels us to a standard of care which we then begin to extend to other living beings and non-living beings. In other words, it is exactly this aesthetic sensibility that Scarry sees as a prerequisite for ethical behavior. It is through an aesthetical encounter with a being or an object that we can learn to act ethically, that is respectfully, open-mindedly, and with an urge to protect and produce more beauty. Although Scarry writes about artworks, she hardly ever mentions music. So how could we translate her thoughts to music, to sounds? Perhaps we could think of how most people love the sounds of nature, rustling leaves, running water, singing birds. Being attracted to these sounds might raise more awareness as to how we have sonically designed or forgot to design our urban environments. Of course we can aspire to build more parks in our densely populated cities, an idea embraced by many people. But following Scary, we could also decide to take more care of the non-natural sounds, the regular city sounds that are always surrounding us thus extending our care to less beautiful sounds. By caring for them, we could perhaps develop ideas to make them less annoying, less boring, less monotonous. Ethical listening and taking care of our sonic environment are two examples of how aesthetics and ethics can be connected, of how music can contribute to concrete moral behavior, of how our encounters with music can also influence our norms and values. Both Derrida and Scarry talked about paying respect. In the next video, you can see an interview I did with the famous Dutch Baroque musician Ton Koopman. In that interview, Koopman will address another kind of respect in relation to music. Curious? Just go to the next video. But before going to that video, we think it's useful to get introduced to a few concrete quotes from contemporary philosophers about ethics and morality. See you soon.